Pastor Truman, for 38 years, has answered the call to be a fisher of men. Every sermon is an anointed invitation to accept the gift of salvation through Jesus. No matter what it takes or where he's called, the pastor does whatever is needed to be a fisher of men. Now, this is Wings of Eagles Ministries with God's anointed pastor, Brother Truman, the fisherman. Welcome to the program today, this Sunday morning. We're working our way towards the Resurrection Sunday. And uh, if you have your Bibles, we welcome you. you get your Bibles, and we'll be in uh, Matthew 23. So we're working, Jesus working his way towards uh, Jerusalem, and we're going to end up in Jerusalem and at Calvary, uh, the long walk to Calvary Hill. And uh, welcome you to the program today. If you're a new listener, we welcome you and all my faithful ones that are always here. I appreciate you being here with us and, and supporting the ministry. And I have a lot of announcements to make today. And we'll make them later. But first, we're going to have a song by Ivana, uh, Praise and Worship. So enjoy, and then we'll get back to the Word. Circumstances come your way And you think you can go on When you're feeling at your weakest Jesus will be strong He'll provide an answer When you thought all hope was gone He'll find a way that if he can paint a sunset, put the stars in place, and if he can raise up mountains, calm the storm toss waves, and if he can conquer death forever, open heaven's gates, I know. He'll find a way At times your heart is breaking With a pain that's so intense All you hold are broken pieces To life that makes no sense But he wants to lift you up torn events He'll pick up the pieces that you thought had all been spent He'll find a way For I know that if He can paint a sunset put the stars in place and if He can raise a
If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew 23. What we're going to talk about today is the, <clears throat> I think it's a, I'm not going to call it, but it's when Jesus kind of reprimanded the ministries that were in place. Uh, and we know, I say we, and uh, we know a lot of ministers that want to expound on the Word. They want to teach you the Word, to let you move in that Word, but they don't live by that Word. Uh, and it's sad but true. I know when I began to serve the Lord, a lot of ministries came to me and told me what I should have and what I shouldn't have in my home, what I shouldn't have hanging on my walls and and uh, the biggest part of that was my traditional ways and the things I had that was very traditional to me. They told me I couldn't have, but they preached that word to me uh, constantly. But uh, when I went to their house, they had more traditional stuff than I had hanging on their walls. So. This is kind of what uh, we're talking about in Matthew is when uh, Jesus came and he reprimanded the people. Uh, but what Jesus said at one time was that uh, traditions of man ruined the word of God. And I'm, I may not be saying that right, but uh, the idea that he was putting at was the Mosaic laws. The Pharisees and scribes, they all believed in the Mosaic laws and they lived by the Mosaic laws. But when Jesus came here, he put an end to the Mosaic laws and brought in the new covenant towards what God had for this world. And when he did that, the, the Jews wanted to stay with the Mosaic laws and sacrifice sacrificing lambs and bullocks and doing all the traditional things that Moses taught in the Mosaic laws. And what was bad about that was that they, they, they didn't, they defiled the word of God, I guess, because if God sent Jesus to redeem us from all that, but they they still preached that and they came against, they wanted people to live, live the life, but uh, evidently they didn't live the life. He uh, talked about fasting. And I think that uh, Lynn is all about uh, checking your inner self towards who you are, what you are and how you are pertaining to the word of God, not really pertaining, I guess, or per se, but um, towards how we want to live uh, in the godly part of us, the spirituality of who we are. So we try to define that towards how we want to present ourselves and be established in that. So it isn't, it isn't do as I say, but not as I do. It's do as I say, as I do it and follow Christ. What did Paul say? Paul said, follow me, not because of who I am, but follow me because I follow Jesus. And it's very important because people want to look at a ministry and they want to follow that ministry, but they want to be like that ministry. But it isn't the person that we follow, it is the person we follow because they follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And once we lock ourselves into that, we begin to understand the fullness of that representation of who we are 
as we exist in this world to the likeness of what God is to us and we feel that we we can live up to his standards and um, I, I say standards but I'm, and I'm not I'm not saying that as a, a, a foundation to who we are because the foundation of who we are is a carnality of what we are in the sinful life that we live uh, per se don't don't run with that because Jesus said if we we say we're we are, we're not sinners, then we're liars because we all sin. And a lot of people, they want to believe that because they're Christians, they, they can live without sin. No, Jesus said it's not that way. And you can't say that you are, but we are perfect in Christ, in Him, spiritually, not physically. Physically, you can claim to be a perfect Christian, but we all, we can never claim that per se to 150% because we're always going to have a flaw in who we are and what we are. And the reality of that is when the, uh, if you remember in the scripture, when the, the, the man brought the, the adulterous woman to Jesus and, and Jesus was riding in the sand, I think Brother Jerry and I, we talked about that. And, uh, the idea of what Jesus told them as they brought her to stone her for what they caught her doing, as they said, uh, we don't know if they did or not. The Bible doesn't say, but it says that they, they claimed that. And Jesus told them, whoever is without sin, let them cast the first stone. And they all went away. And, and Jesus asked her where her persecutors were, and she said they all left, and they, they weren't gonna do anything, and per se that Jesus said, neither am I. So the, the reality of what we are, we wanna, and I say we because I'm, I'm in the category of the, in ministry, so I can, I, I have to put, I have to put myself in the same, uh, the way everybody else is, even though I believe that I'm not that way, because if I if I preach about something, uh, we I want to definitely live what I preach. And you remember the the big ministries uh, uh, on TV back years that they had the big controversy. One big ministry was preaching about another ministry and how he was doing wrong and how he got caught with a, a prostitute or had a girlfriend or something and he got caught on video and he preached against that. And as he preached against that to his church and uh, the world, he became that. When he preached against it, he was doing it himself and until he got caught. So. Uh, what I say, do as I say, but not as I do. I can preach a good word, and if I lift that word, then uh, hooray for me, I guess. But if, if I preach that word and I'm not living that word, then I'm doing fault to the people because when Paul said, don't follow me because of who I am, follow me because I follow Jesus, don't, don't ever look at my life because I make mistakes every day and I'm, I'm willing to admit I make mistakes. But the reality is I live under grace and I'm forgiven for the things I do. And if I ask for that forgiveness, I'm going to be given that forgiveness. Jesus says uh, he'll always be there to forgive us and his forgiveness is quick. So we, we operate under that or we should operate under that. And sometimes we we come against uh, the, the ministries because when they fall, we, we understand or, or we see that, oh, it was gonna happen, but we really don't know that. And uh, the things that uh, we see the ministries fail in is they preach against a certain thing, but they become that. And uh, remember the one big ministry preached about homosexuality and he preached really hard against that. And he had one of the hugest churches in the 
the United States. And when he preached against that, and what did they catch him doing? Doing exactly what he was preaching against. So it is a, it is not a good thing to preach against people per se. I would say I don't, I don't ever preach against ministries. One thing you will never hear me do is preach against the church. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. How can you come against his house and not say that you're coming against the people? You, I hear pre preachers get up every day and they want to condemn the church. The, the church is us. It isn't the building. It isn't the, the denomination that operates under it. It is the individuals. So you, you can't condemn the body of Christ if if the Lord doesn't condemn them, why, where are we? What did he look when he, in, in Matthew, he looked upon the multitude of people and what did it say? He said, it said he had compassion on them. And the compassion he has because they were sheep without a shepherd. And the, the people were going astray because they didn't have nobody to guide them and lead them and not by my own personality do I lead people, but I lead them through the personality of who Jesus Christ is and Father God that sent him to, to his ability to lead the people. I point them in the right direction and allow them to follow him, not me. Don't follow me, I make mistakes, I stumble a lot. And uh, what did Job say? I may stumble, but I will not fall. And I may stumble a lot, but I'm not gonna fall because I stay, I hold on, I hold on to that hand that guides me and leads me, and that, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So <clears throat> I hope you understand where I'm getting at and where I'm going with this today. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not coming against any ministry. I'm, I'm just gonna read what Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees and the Sanhedrin because they controlled the people. They judged the people. They were there for the people. And they, they told them how to live their life, but they didn't live it according to what they were talking about. And they did things for show. The Bible always talks about, <clears throat> don't ever walk into the house of God and go to the front row. Sit in the back that you will be called to the front and not say, oh, we need your seat at the front. Can you go to the back so this person can sit up here? Always sit in the back that you may be called to the front. Always be the one. If you're going to go and fast, don't go stand on the street corner in sackcloth with ashes on your head and cry your prayers over and over where people can see them and know what you're doing. And Jesus said, if you're going to fast to to the Father, then go into your closet and do that fast, not in public where people, and he says, don't, uh, I think he talks about it in this one I'm gonna read here, but he says, don't put that saddened countenance on and go go out where people can look at you and and uh, have pity on you, but he, he says, wash your face and clean yourself up and carry a good countenance that you're going to do a fast, but you're doing it towards what Jesus Christ is to you. Amen. So I want to welcome everyone here again uh, once more. And we uh, keep, let's, let's read some scripture. I'm trying to see who all is on here. Okay. St. Matthew 3. Uh, this is to the scribes and Pharisees of their good doctrine, but evil examples of life. And it's very important that we, uh, if we're going to talk the talk and walk the walk, then we should do it according to what God is to us through Jesus Christ as he works in our life. So let us read some scripture here. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. 
all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe that observe and do but do not ye after their works for they say and do not for they bind heavy burdens and grievance to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers but all their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their plectrophies and enlarge the borders of their garments now i want to stop now let me read one more verse verse six and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and their chief seats in the synagogue and seven and greeting in the markets and the call of men rabbi rabbi <clears throat> What is what? What exactly is he saying here? You know, the flak flakteries are the scriptures they write and they bind them to their foreheads. And what Jesus is saying is they print them in a little bit larger, so when they get them out, people will recognize what they're doing. And what he's saying is, you you give the people the way they're supposed to live but you don't live it yourself. You, you put burdens upon the people and they're not able to carry them, but you don't do any of the things that you're supposed to do. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to read this one over to you. And, um, but all their works they do for you, verse five, for to be seen of men, they make broad their factories and large the border of their garments. <coughs> Excuse me. The border of their garments were like, I don't know, half an inch, maybe. And uh, Jesus required that border to be put on the hem of their garments as they wore their robes to be recognized for who they are. They wanted to be recognized more, so they enlarged that hem. Instead of being a half an inch, they broadened it to an inch or two inches <coughs> excuse me so they could be recognized from afar off and they they love to walk in markets and be recognized for who they are I never like to be recognized for who I am I wanted to be I try to be humble in who I am when I go into a place I don't walk in and say, well, I'm a preacher. I'm, I'm here to listen. I'm, I don't do that. I, I walk in as part of the congregation. And when I deal with that, and if I'm recognized for who I am, that's, uh, that's not me. That's the Lord. Um, I remember I went to a, a funeral a sister was doing down in Tahola, uh, Sister Rocky. And I went down there just to be a part of the funeral because it was a, it was a, I, I knew the person that had passed and I, I sat way in the back and, but when Rocky was ministering and I, I ministered with Sister Rocky a lot and uh, Lord bless her and uh, her passing uh, took a lot of grief from everyone. There is a, but she seen me sitting in her congregation and she, she recognized me and she called me up and, and what always really got me was, she said, I, I want uh, Brother Truman Santiago to come up here. He said, to, she said, Tahola's own. And I'm not from Tahola, but my, my heart's always been there. So she called me up and asked me to say a few words. So I went up and did. And that's what Jesus is talking about. Don't go into markets expecting people to, to, to want to be recognized. They, that's why they broadened the hem of their garments so people would recognize them and they would come up and say, Rabbi, Rabbi. And we, we don't want to, uh, I don't like to focus things upon me I want to be a regular person. If I can't go into a congregation and I don't go sit in the front, no, I never do that. I go sit in the back and um, as far back as I can possibly get. 
And what do they say about Indian people? You got to get to church pretty early to get that back row. So I'm there pretty early to get the back row. So, and, but the idea is be recognized of God, not of people, and don't present yourself. And this is what uh, Jesus is coming against the Pharisees and scribes and the Sadducees because they want to be known for who they are. They preach the word of God. They preach it according to the standards of the people that they think the people should live. But Jesus said that they don't live by it themselves. They don't do anything of it. But they they want to to put the, the heavy burdens upon the people. They want them to, you know, you got to walk this straight and narrow and you got to do perfectly. And they stumble a lot themselves and there and people see that. And uh, and that's why I like what Paul said, don't follow me because of who I am, follow me because I follow Jesus. And that's the, the mentality that we should be thinking if we're in ministry to, if people are gonna follow us and, and recognize who we are, then, then do it because of the word of God that comes forth. And um, I'm, I, I'm willing to be reprimanded if I'm if I'm doing wrong. Reprimand me if I'm doing wrong. I'll yeah, I'll take it with a grain of salt if I have to. But I don't. I, can I say this? I've been a Christian for 40 years, and the one thing in a carnality of who I am that always follows me is I don't like nobody hollering at me. I cannot, I, I, I can't deal with it. You wanna reprimand me? If I'm wrong, I'm gonna take it. But if I'm not wrong, I'm gonna come against what you're saying to me because I'm, I don't like, and if a person's gonna come up to me and begin to holler at me, uh, Lord help me, uh, because I, I've, I've, I've never got rid of that. Can I say that? Um, that's something that I've, that I've never been able to really put aside. And that it's still, uh, if that's one of my faults, then that's one of my faults. And, but it, it's, it's something I, I have a hard time dealing with because if you can't, uh, what did Thumper say? He said, what did his mom say? What did I tell you? And Thumper puts his hands behind his back and he's stomping his foot on the ground. He says, if you can't say nothing that nice about somebody, don't say nothing at all. And his mom said, right, that's the way you're supposed to be. So Thumper knew, so he didn't talk about anybody. If you can't say something nice about somebody, don't say nothing at all. And when that little rabbit can understand that, what's so hard about us understanding that and it becomes true with everything we do if you can't say something nice about somebody then, then keep your mouth shut don't say anything so it's a reality of what jesus sees and how he reprimands them and how he understands that now we're going to finish it off and we're going to go we're going to start in verse eight <coughs> and we're going to go i think i did seven yeah. So in verse 8, we're going to finish in, in 12. So St. Matthew 23, verse 8. But be, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. He says, you know, well, the scripture says it just the way it's supposed to be. Nobody being called that. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Verse 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be a bast, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So, the reality of what Jesus is saying is that you cannot deal with the reality of who they are because 
There is one Father, one Son, one Holy Spirit. You and the Trinity is still one. There are three uh, heads, but one. I, I'm, I think that was probably one of the hardest things for me to understand. If there's three and there's still one, how how could it possibly be? But after you understand it, they all they're all one. So how how can they be all separate? But the the reality, a lot of people believe Jesus only, but you can't believe Jesus only because when he got baptized, the three the three heads were there. God was speaking from heaven. Jesus was being baptized, and the Holy Spirit came upon him. Uh, the Bible says, like a dove. And everybody says, well, it came down like a dove. It looked like a dove. No, it didn't look like a dove. It came upon him like as it were a dove. And a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand a lot of things in, a, in the Word of God. They, can't, they take it so literal. And the one that, and let me throw this out there. Don't, don't, don't get, don't get me. But the one that I hate the most is when Jesus was in the garden, he prayed so hard that he was praying and his sweat turned to blood. No, it did not turn to blood. And I've heard people over and over do the scientific discovery of if you pray that hard and you're in that much agony and anxiety that you're going to pop the capillaries in your brain or in your forehead and they're going to begin to bleed. No, that isn't what the Word says. The Word says His sweat were great drops as it were great drops of blood. He didn't say it was blood. It says, it's as it were, great drops of blood. And a lot of people misquote that. They misuse that. They say he was actually sweating blood. Nah, that ain't what the word says. And read it yourself, understand it yourself, because we're going to be preaching about that in the next few weeks coming when he was in the garden praying. And you're going to hear me say it again. So there is a, a reality of what the word says and how we understand it, how we want to see it. We want to be, uh, this is exactly what Jesus is talking about. You want to preach that and stand upon that and teach that, but really you don't believe it, but you're going to put it out there for the people to believe, but you're not living that same thing. That's what he's talking about. So a lot of people like to put into the whole reality of what, the doctors say and what that says and we're going to get into that when he's hanging on the cross and they're going to they're, let me just hit on that they're going to say no he wasn't nailed to the cross in the palm of his hands he was nailed in his wrist because his palms wouldn't hold him up uh, that's crap because the Bible says when he opens his hands he says where are the the nail prints in his palms of his hands. They didn't say they were in his wrist. They said it was in the palm of his hand. So when you start listening towards Easter, you're going to hear all this stuff that he couldn't hang on the cross with these hands being there with tear and all this. No, don't, don't believe that because believe what the Bible says. If you want to believe the word of God, then believe the word of God written in the Holy Bible. And when it says, I didn't hear you go off. Okay. So the reality of that is Jesus is coming against all that. And then when he talks about the reality of who we are, and uh, he said, if you want to be the greatest, if, if he that is greatest among you and shall be the servant, you remember when, and we're going to get to that, too. We're going to get to all this, because when Jesus came, wasn't he the Lord, Jesus Christ? But what did he do in the upper room? He took off his robe, put an apron on, and grabbed a dishpan of water and began to wash the disciples' feet. 
And he became a servant to all. He wasn't in his deity of who he was or who he is, but he became that servant. That's what he's saying. If you think you're greater, the greatest one among them, then you got to become that servant to be accepted into the reality of what Jesus Christ is all about to God the Father. And once you do that, you'll understand the fullness of what I'm talking about. So, yes, I'm coming against ministries, but not anybody, anyone in particular, but I, I just get a little uh, a miffed about how people want to throw, throw it out there for us to live. Oh, you walk this way and you talk this way, but they themselves don't do it. Like I said at the beginning of the service, a lot of people told me what I shouldn't have, what I couldn't have, but when I went to their house, Guess what? They had everything they told me to get rid of in my house, but they had it in their house. So if uh, that's exactly what Jesus is talking about, you, you preach it, but you don't live it. If you're going to preach that word, then, then live that word. If you're going to walk that walk, then walk the walk and talk the talk according to who he is not who you are. And always remember what Paul said. I'm gonna go back to it. I'm gonna throw it in there several times today. Don't follow me because of who I am. Follow me because of Jesus Christ. And it's very important that we relate towards that and to the reality of who we are and what we are. So uh, maybe I hammered on a few ministries. I don't know who they are, but um, I bet you know who you are. So, and don't get me bound up in everything. And if, I, if I'm a, a little apprehensive on things, I, I'm a, I just wanted to throw that out there. And that's what the scripture's talking about. This is, Jesus is dealing with all this on his way to Calvary. And he's telling his disciple, you know, don't be like this person. If you're gonna fast, don't, don't go, with the sad countenance and go let people see you wash your face and dress yourself up and be normal don't let people say oh poor so-and-so he's fasting and he looks so pitiful no oh i want to tell you i'm going to leave you with this i fasted for 45 days one time and this is as god is my witness I fasted 45 days. I lost five pounds in that whole fast. And I gained three of them back by the time I ended the fast. So I only lost two pounds. Amazing, amazing to me, but it, it is what I did for the presentation of what Jesus could do for me, not what, what I could do for him at that time, but I did learn it isn't for me. What did, uh, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, who was that? Uh, the one president, this is his favorite line. Ask not what the country can do for you. Who was it? Kennedy, yeah. Ask not what the country could do for you, but ask what you can do for the country. And I use that quote a hundred times in my ministry. Ask not what God can do for you, but ask what you can do for him. And if it, if it is living your life according to what his standards are, then by golly, live your life best of your ability. It's not going to be perfect but it will be there. So I take that quote and I change it a little bit, but it's the same thing that he said, Kennedy said it very well. And I took that and I, I use it all the time. Don't ask not what God can do for you because we always want, want, want. We never want to give, give, give. And so it, it becomes important that we, we learn to be a giver towards what God wants. What does he want? He, we want him to do so much for us, but what are we going to do for him? We're going to talk good about him. We're going to spread the word of God. We're going to teach uh, how to live live a life of Christ. Uh, it, 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 it's an impossibility 
to be perfect in this world. And a lot of people are gonna come against that because they believe they're perfect because they're Christians. No, they're not perfect. They're still, there's gonna be a possibility they're gonna get out of bed one night and they're gonna stub their toe and things are gonna come out of their mouth that they thought they had put away years ago and it'll still surface. Well, you're, you're gonna, and if Paul says that he drugged that old man around, then by golly, we're gonna drag it around because we, we're not gonna get rid of him. We we'll never will. And if Paul says that, I know that our two beings warring against each other in my body, then I understand that. The old man is always gonna fight who I am and who I want to be. So understand that. You're not gonna be perfect. We're striving to be perfect. Amen. So we, we strive for our ability to do what Jesus expects of us, but we fail a lot. And uh, failure isn't bad because the Lord is always there to forgive us and give us his grace, and raise us back up and pack us. And if you feel uh, let down, go read the poem of footsteps or footprints, I guess it is called. And uh, when the man saw only one set of footprints, what did he ask? Where were you? And what did Jesus tell him? This is when I was carrying you. So the reality of who we are is what, according to what Jesus Christ is in us at any particular time. So failure, uh, I know that word very well, uh, but we, we try to present ourselves to be that what we want to be, but we can never, we never accomplish it sometimes. We're never going to be perfect until we cross over the threshold. Then perfection is going to be who we hope. want to uh, welcome you all for being with me. I hope this gets you a, a, a little bit prepared for your fasting and what you do for the Lord through our the, the period of Lent all the way to, to the cross of Calvary. So we're going to work our way towards that. And I want you to stay with me uh, through all this because I'm going to do a Monty Thursday and I'm going to do a Good Friday and I will do Easter Sunday. So uh, Monty Thursday will and since it was the Last Supper, we'll have our communion that day, and then we'll also have communion on uh, for Easter Sunday and Resurrection Day. So stay with us through this period towards Easter. You know, we're all striving towards uh, the resurrection. What does the rest resurrection show us? That we have life on life, everlasting. So when we leave this world, uh, we don't die. We just step into another realm and continue on who we are. So I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've picked up a little bit on this. So don't don't be too hard on ministries. Uh, pray for them. If they're in fault, don't, uh, don't try to correct. Just pray. And if you see me making a mistake, uh, don't tell me I'm making it. Just pray for me. <laughs> Pray hard, because Lord knows I need it. And uh, keep praying for us on this end, and we'll pray for all of you. Robbie, you're always in our prayer. Linda and Jerry, uh, Pat, I got to remember to order you and Sean's coat, so we'll take care of that. Um, and uh, just continue to pray for everything towards Easter, Easter Sunday. And, 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 important. I know Tahola is always on my mind. Robbie's there all the time. Florine, maybe she'll be here. Edetta, Pat, Bill, uh, I'll be here later on. And Sister Brown from Arizona. So I'm looking, I'm excited for the people that, that really uh, watch the program. And I hope we have done you a lot of good into the reality of what we stand for. You belong to this church. We welcome you. We hope you always be established in who we are. And we're going to close out with uh, Brother Larry Emerson. Going to do some praise and worship and hope you enjoy him. May he rest in peace. And uh, 
enjoy. We will see you next week and prepare our road to Calvary. Have a good week and enjoy, pray, keep in prayer. I hope you will all see each other soon at some meeting. Amen. Brother Larry Emerson. Thou art worthy, O my precious Lord, to be praised. Pastor Truman would love to hear from you. Email Native Prayer Warriors at gmail.com. That's Native Prayer Warriors at gmail.com. Or 
Mail to Wings of Eagles Ministries, 1010 Coolidge Road, Aberdeen, Washington, 98520. And remember, God through His Son has made you perfect in His sight.